Are the NBA champions world champions? The answer to that is no, and I'm going to explain why. So first, let's take that take a look at the premise on why people believe the Boston Celtics are the best team in the world, thus world champions. So the NBA is the most lucrative league on the planet right now. They have they are the most established and longest established professional basketball league on the planet. And it is naturally uh, natural to assume that they are m- the most profitable, the highest grossing revenue league on the planet. And it is true. The NBA ha- offers the most money to the best talent. And it is for that reason people assume that players from all over the world, the best ones, will come to the NBA to make the most money for their given talent. And we've seen that in real life uh, happen. The current best player on the planet is Nikola Jokic, who is from Serbia. He's a three-time MVP, and he currently has a Supermax contract with the Denver Nuggets. That is an example of top talent from around the world coming to the NBA and making the most money that they can playing basketball, okay? And it is f- for this, this example uh, that is replicated through many players like Giannis, formerly a Joel Embiid, and other international players, uh, that people assume that all the best talent is already in the NBA. Thus, when these players compete against each other, whoever wins should be called world champion because there is enough diversity among the league that it is not an American team who wins, it's not an international team who wins, it is a team mixed up of all nations. Therefore, whoever wins that is the world champion. However, this does not prove that the Boston Celtics are NBA champions. And I'm going to explain a couple reasons why. So first and foremost, the rules and regulations right now favor the Boston Celtics the best. Because the Boston Celtics have assembled the best team to capitalize on the rules and regulations of the NBA. That's why they're... NBA champions. However, we know that in different leagues, there are different rules, there are different regulations, there's different court sizes and all that that could favor a certain player. Let me show you an example. So let's look at the rules on the FIBA. FIBA International Basketball Federation. So the court dimensions on FIBA are smaller. The three-point line in FIBA is closer to the basket. The game duration is 10-minute quarters versus 12. And the shot clock is similar, but the personal fouls is uh, less in the FIBA and more in the NBA. Another thing, Euro League games allow for fewer timeouts compared to the NBA. Uh, the possession. Oh, most importantly, there's no defensive three-second violation. So let me explain how these different rules in a FIBA tournament could favor a different country or a different league versus if they played in NBA rules. So let's say the uh, the national team from Brazil or Japan. Let's use Japan because they're a great example. Let's say the Japanese team played in the NBA and they got smashed by the Boston Celtics. But they play in a FIBA tournament and then for some reason Japan makes it very competitive and they somehow pull off the win. And we're like, whoa, how did that happen? Well, first, let's look at the rules and regulations, and uh, we can draw conclusions on how that may have happened. So we know that Japan is not consisted of giants. They're smaller people, average size, 5'8 or smaller. We saw that in the Paris Olympics where the point guard of Japan was like 5'6", and Victor Wembanyama from France towered over him. Right, so let's say... Japan has many of those same size players, 5'6". Well, let's look at the court dimensions. Court dimensions on a FIBA cup or a FIBA tournament are 28 by 15 meters. That's smaller than the NBA court. So that means a smaller player has to cover less distance to play defense. That will help the smaller player more than it will help the, the bigger player because if you have to cover less distance to play defense... That means you need less athleticism to be, to be uh, what's it called, competent on a basketball court, okay? 
Same with the three-point line. If the three-point line is closer to the basket, that means you don't need as much of a jump or a strong arm to make a basketball shot from three. Also, game duration. A game duration is 10 minutes. Maybe a smaller team has, you know, smaller people. They have an advantage over bigger people in terms of energy conservation, right? The smaller people could blitz a lot more because relative to the bigger person, they're using less energy to produce the same movement. So they may use these smaller quarters to blitz more and gas these players out. That's another advantage that could give a Japan team an advantage in a FIBA tournament versus an NBA uh, tournament, okay? Same with technical fouls. And also, look, this is the most important one, the three-second violation. If you have a Japanese team with one tall giant, maybe two if you're lucky, they don't need to be Shaquille O'Neal or uh, what's his name from the Timberwolves who plays for France. The beard guy, basketball player, not Carl Anthony Towns, go Burt, four-time defensive player of the year. You don't need to be a shredded seven-foot-one go Burt that covers the floor as better than any other center. Uh, you can just have a big, fat guy that's seven feet, not that much athleticism, and clog up the paint. Because since this three-second violation doesn't exist in FIBA tournaments, he's not worrying about moving his feet, shuffling around. All he has to do is take up some space and position himself the best to play defense. If he had to move around, that player would get exposed way worse than than in a FIBA tournament. You get what I'm saying? So these different rules and regulations, while the Boston Celtics still may still win in a FIBA tournament, it is not guaranteed that they would win because these other rules may favor uh international team that is experienced with these rules and have strategies to beat a team like a Boston Celtics, okay? Now, the other reason why the Boston Celtics are not world champions is the premise of being a world champion right now is you have to have a certain type of player compete for a certain nationality because the world stage is comprised of different nations right and the only way you can be a world champion is you need to win with a certain nationality of players because the point of finding out what a world champion is or the point of finding out who the best in the world is it's really finding out where the best genetics and cultural system is at for example if the americans win the world championship, that means that America has the best genetics for basketball and they have the most, the best culture to cultivate the talent and genetics that they have. And that is true. America has won most world championships and Olympic games like they did this Paris Olympics. Thus, we can assume that America has the best top tier talent overall. Not not the best player, or maybe not the best five players, but overall, they cultivate the best talent. They have the best genetics to succeed in the game of basketball. Another example, if the country of Slovakia, if the country of all Slovakian players were to win the World Cup of basketball, people would be like, oh my gosh, maybe Slovakia does not have the best player in the world right now, or maybe they don't even have a top 20 player in the in the world. And maybe they don't have a top player in the NBA. But overall, Slovakia produces the best team basketball. They produce the best communication. They produce the best uh, uh, defensive teamwork for basketball. Thus, they, they are the world champions. Or, or maybe Slovakia has the best genetics. For communication on defense, the best agility that and that contributes to their defensive prowess. Many reasons, but the premise is you need to the world champions finds out who has the best genetics and cultural development of basketball. Okay, and you cannot find that out with a team comprised of players from around the world, uh, like the Boston Celtics. They have Porzingis. They have 
Jason Tatum, and I'm sure they have some other international player. We, when we look at an NBA champion, we're not sure if the international player is the reason why they win or the American player, right? And let's look at another example explaining this. So here on chat, GPT, I looked at the past 10 NBA champions, excluding the Boston Celtics. So starting with the Denver Nuggets from 2023 all the way to 2014. As you can see that every NBA champion from these years has a different amount of American-born players. This stat is telling me how many Americans are on the roster of these champions. And for the Denver Nuggets, it was 8. Warriors, it was 10. So on and so forth. It varied. Toronto Raptors at 3. So we, we can make a different uh, inferences or conclusions from these stats. We, could we say that a team that consists of at least half or more than half of American-born players are going to be the NBA champions? And if so, does that mean that a team that has mostly Americans, would that uh, increase the likelihood of them being the best team in the world? We don't know because uh, in 2019, they had three American-born players out of 15. That's an outlier. Compared to all these other teams. However, uh, if you know the context, we know that it wasn't really the international players that put Toronto uh, over the top and win their first title. It was Kawhi Leonard, an American-born player superstar. And uh, if you didn't know that, then you would think, oh, the international players this year were the reason why the, the Raptors were the NBA champions. Therefore, international players are, are better. Than American, and if you have international players, you're more likely to become a world champion. That's not true because, like I said, the context you had Kawhi Leonard, that's one out of the three, and he's the reason why he propelled them to the NBA championship. So, given that, maybe you could argue that American talent you need American talent to be NBA champions, and if you have American talent, you are likely to be a world champion. Okay, so. Now that we look at that, the third reason why the Boston Celtics are not world champions, just NBA champions, is would the Boston Celtics beat the current Olympic champions, who are also world champions, because the Olympic competition uh, had followed the rules that I explained earlier, the prerequisites, that every nation has um, uh, players from the have that citizenship of that country and uh they are able to represent that that country okay so nba had i mean the the team usa had all american players i know joel Embiid is like in the middle but he's nationalized so he counts uh the french team had all french born players or all french national citizens so on and so forth so every team that competed in the olympics had one nationality competing for that team. So does that NBA team, the Boston Celtics, do they beat the USA team? No, they don't. We know that Team USA would mop the floor with the current NBA champions, Boston Celtics, because Jason Tatum cancels Jason Tatum out. Drew cancels Drew out. And I forgot this guy's name, uh, David White. I believe that's his name, David White. Yeah, he cancels himself out because they're, they're on the NBA team and Team USA. So they cancel each, each other out. And LeBron mops the floor with Brown. Embiid mops the floor with Porzingis. AD mops the floor with whoever those guys are. Booker smashes them. You know, Team USA has way more talent and way more depth than this Boston Celtics team. So we know that there's a current team, a current official team, in the world right now, that that is assembled that would beat the NBA champions, and they all consist, they all have one common factor is that they're all American, so we can deduce that the Americans, the American team, is the best team in the world. Thus, they are the world champions, and they are world champions because they beat every other team on the planet that consisted of. The same prerequisites. They beat other teams that only had one nationality and 
All of those nations brought the best players of that certain nationality. Okay? So that is the reason why the NBA champions are not world champions. The NBA champions, they vary with the types of players that they have. And think about it. If one year the NBA champions might be all international players and all the worst teams in the NBA are 100% American. Does that really prove that the NBA team is is the best team in the world? Because let's say that same year they go to the Olympics, they dismantle that international team. Or let's say they that international team is all from one country. Let's say they're from, from England. So the NBA champions are all from England. And then they go to, they go to the Olympics and represent England. Now the NBA or the USA assembles their best American players some of which are on the worst team, but they assemble all the best ones from the country, and then they smash. They smash the England team, which were the NBA champions. So there are many loopholes that could disprove why the NBA champions are the world champions. I hope everyone understands this. Uh, there, my points may have made not, might not have made sense, but there's... Very, there's quite a few reasons, like I said, that would disprove the Boston Celtics being world champions. They're not undisputed and definitive world champions. Oh, wait, let me go over the last one. So, the Boston Celtics, in order for them to be definitive world champions, they would have to face the best club teams from other domestic leagues. And out of those, out of that tournament with those teams, they would need to beat all of them or beat the ones that advance. And if they come out on top, then yes, they can call themselves world champions because the other teams would have the same rules. and uh, They are assembled the same way as the Boston Celtics. They are a club team comprised of maybe international players, the best ones that they can find. Therefore, if they were to compete against other champions that have the same composition of mixed American international players. They all went up against each other. Whoever comes out on top, they can certainly call themselves world champions. But in this case, they aren't. We don't know if the Boston Celtics would beat the Euro League champ. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, guys. So the NBA overall is a stronger league. I do agree with that. Uh, I agree that NBA teams would mop the floor with other teams and other leagues for the most part. But what we don't know is, uh, is the best of the best in other leagues uh, that far lower than the best of the best in the NBA? That we don't know. We might have the, the strongest league overall, but the cream of the crop of another league might smash the best team in the NBA, despite being a stronger league overall. We never know, and they have to put that to the test before we start calling NBA champions world champions. So Boston Celtics, they need to face the best team of South America after the South America clubs compete. Then they would have to beat the best Euro uh, club after the Euro domestic leagues compete. And then they would have to face the best Asian team after all the Asian clubs compete and have their champion right so the best club teams would have to face each other and whoever comes out on top can be called world champions because this competition would have covered and started around the world and it would spiral and trickle its way down to the remaining top few okay so that is my reason why the boston celtics are not world champions